Remember George, the guy that drove us to New York? With the yeah, okay. absolutely. George is a dear, dear friend of mine. I, I love him with all my heart. In 1993, I'm living in Boulder. I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'm just in a fucking pond. And I move back. And I stay with Mike Runny for like a month until his wife has the baby. And once she has the baby, I have to move in with George. But George is on heroin. Mm. That kid that drove us over was a fucking nutcase. Like, right. it was just bad. So, uh. How do you get out of that? Oh, wow. my God. So uh, he's on heroin, and it's a Sunday. I'll never forget this. And I had this little college girlfriend I was dating. I had been messing around with her in Boulder for about a year. And now she was living on by the uh, by Manhattan Honda. Okay. On, on 18th and whatever that. She was like all the way on the west 7th. side? Yeah, on the west side. Yeah. She had a little bit. I remember the, the, the corner was Goodfellas Pizza. And there was a wild bar on that, like 15th Street. That was a wild bar. And they used to do comedy there. Was Open that Coyote Mike. Ugly? No, 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 no. This was, was fucking a bar that Something. just. And I'll never forget being in there. And there was a black chick at the bar. Like, I had a couple of great times in there. Huh. Like I went in there with a friend of mine one night. We bumped into two chicks to do open mic. And next thing you know, my buddy had the girl on stage with no shirt on. What? And we're, made, we're sucking the titties. It's fucking crazy. It's This bar was crazy. It was a dirty open mic, like Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 9 to 11. I was just getting into comedy. So, to make a long story short, there's one Sunday. I'm bored to pieces. I got 26 bucks. I got a spot in the city. And I can't go over now to get weed because I can't afford to go over and back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, once I go into the city, I got to go into the city. It's <laughs> 1 o'clock. I got to wait till 5 or 6 before I go into the city. And those days, I would walk over. You walk over the George Washington Bridge? Oh, I would walk from Cliffside yeah. Park and then with Terrace. Oh, my. That's actually. All the way to Fort Lee. <laughs> I'd stop and get a bagel when they had the fresh bagels right by the bridge. Yeah. And I'd get a poppy seed with a fucking I have a buddy coke. who worked at that store. That right fucking store at Fort Lee Diner is right there. And I'd walk yeah. over that fucking George Washington Bridge. And if I was being really greedy, there was a Safeway there, like a supermarket there, mm. a red something. And I'd go in there and steal like either tampons or a box of fucking uh, uh, yeast medication. <laughs> like, and you walk it over, you walk it over the George Washington Bridge and you find the bodega on 181st Street and they would buy yeast medication from you, aspirin, because all the girls, so you would sell it That's to That's something I never, ever thought oh there would be a black market yeah, for. Yeah, a black market for, for everything. yeast medication. And it would be like the small 20. Dude, we were at, we were at a store wow. last night, that uh, a store that just had a bunch of stuff that was out. It was just like I, uh, they were gonna put it away or something. But it, like Joey was looking at looking at me like, if this was twenty years ago. Oh yeah, they had six cases oh, of man. Jack Daniels, just on 12, the street. Twelve bottles a piece. They're twenty a bottle. That's yeah. two hundred a case. I get at a liquor store. There were six cases, twelve hundred for six cases. Give me eleven hundred yeah. cash. I'll be out of your life forever. <laughs> a bag of chips and a lottery ticket. You know what I'm saying? That's how we lived. Plus, they had 10 cases of Yoohoo, plus a case of Malibu rum. That's a $1,200, $1,300 score in the old days. Real quick, real quick. Just go get the car. Just bag it up. Go yeah. get the car. Go get the car. You know where we were parked? Where? Where we were parked last night? Right. All you got to do is drive it over to the gate. Like, we own the joint. And I, by where you're going to get the car, I'm bringing cases back there. And I just load them up. <laughs> And by the time you back up, there's already four cases back there. You're just loading them in like you own the place. You can't do that now because there's cameras. Right. They got you. Like, I'll have to disconnect the 882 fucking cameras. I ain't got that type of time. Or wear a gotta, mask or something. But yeah. then you're the dude wearing a mask and everybody yeah, knows something's yeah, weird. Yeah. No, 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 no. So. Unless you want to wear a mask all the time. It's a Sunday. Yeah. and I, It's a Sunday. Ah. And it's a beautiful day. I'll never fucking forget this. I'm St. George is already heroin down. It's got to be one or two in the afternoon, and George is already on heroin. He's going in and out of this heroin. And there was a lady right above us, and she's in the backyard cooking hamburgers with, like, her fucking younger boyfriend giggling. And she had, like, a kid. That wasn't her husband. That wasn't the kid's father. And I'm watching this, and I go, if she's downstairs, where's her purse? Huh. 
And I, <laughs> I went out the front door. Oh I run up to her apartment because they live right over us. Uh, and I went for the door, and sure enough, it's open. I knocked first. Nobody said hello. And I and she's in the backyard cooking. Her boyfriend's laying out with one of those fucking Guido things. With the reflector? Yeah, the, with the reflector. <laughs> and I'm like, these fucking dummies. And sure enough, her purse is on the dinner table right when I walk in with a deposit slip, with a deposit envelope. Like, she just cashed a check. Oh, man. And I just took the whole thing. It had to be $800, and I went downstairs. You know me, dog. I'm an old slide dog. I'm a degenerate. <laughs> it's like you have a Spider-Man sense, but it's for thieving things. Yeah, it's it's a th <laughs> it was terrible. I always walked into the right place. And I went downstairs, and I hid the money, and I laid back on the couch like nothing happened. And I watched them eat the burger and the whole fucking thing. <laughs> Oh my and I'm gosh. I'm sitting there going, if I leave, George is going to know I robbed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I cannot leave. This lady's going to say something. And sure enough, the barbecue ends. They're not up there 10 minutes. She's knocking on the door with the cops. And and she's like looking for George because the whole building knew he was a junkie. Right, right. And they're like, where's George? And George is fucking like, what? And she goes, you robbed my money. Everybody knows you're a junkie. He's like, I, I haven't left the bed. I, you know, I've been <laughs> sleeping all day. And she goes, you can even ask Coco. And I'm like, he's been there all day. And she goes, who are you? And I go, I've been here with him. I haven't left her either. She goes, well, somebody went into my apartment and took my paycheck. And I'm fucking howling. I'm <laughs> howling inside. I'm dying of laughter because she doesn't even think about me. She's just blaming George. I'm surprised you didn't right. go down and be like, oh, you're cooking kind of a burger? And, and then you can, like share a burger with her. While just No. Uh, next thing you know. I wouldn't, she, I wouldn't have the guts the to cops, do that. The, oh, this is, when oh. I was, this is when I was crazy. The cops couldn't press charges on either of us. Even George said, if you want, look around. I have no money. I got $13. Yeah. And I took my I had like $26 or something. Where did he put the 800 <laughs> Downstairs in the basement in the garbage, <laughs> hidden. And dog, once the cops left, we went back to the back room and George goes, I know you fucking robbed <laughs> I go, I know, I know. I'll give you 100 So I went downstairs. I gave him a yardstick, and I shot over to the city with seven bills. I bought an eight ball. Whoa. I got a hotel room in the city. She came over like a doctor. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, my scam was, all right, this is scam. This is ridiculous. I, I was like, sneak out of the house in junior high or something like that in Vegas. And my buddy Matt and I and my brother sometimes, we'd go down to the 7-Eleven. And I'd take two packs of Bubblicious and I'd pretend like I was looking in my uh, pocket for money and then I'd come back out with one. That was my move. That's the move. That's the move. I, was, I thought I was like the world's best criminal. You take two lighters right in front of the fucking guy at 7 Eleven. <laughs> and when you get for the cigarettes, you ask him for cigarettes, he turns around. When he turns back around, you're pulling out a wallet. Right. He's looking at you like. But he don't have the balls to ask you what's in your pocket. He knows you shoplifted, but he can't ask. Jesus, you you want to find my wallet? I shoplifted me? a few times, but not because they used to. Uh, there was a store called Strawberries. Yeah, I was growing up a music place, With clothes and stuff. And they had yeah, of course not the clothes now. They had instead of gift cards, they had like coins that were worth certain amounts of money. And I took one once because it, it was like the worst system ever. They didn't have to activate it or anything. I hmm. did that. I also, this isn't really stealing, <laughs> but in college, I figured out that this place had a coupon, and if you spent like eight bucks, you got a free mini pizza. So, or like, whatever it was, I got, I did it so many times, they, they called me and said, you're going to have to order more, or we're not coming over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I remember, oh man, this takes me back a little bit. I was, I forget how old I was. I must have been six or seven. It was right after soccer practice, because I had my like soccer shorts on, or it was a game. And I had my cleats and stuff. Sometimes when you'd walk around the grocery store with cleats. And I, I remember putting a, a, a box of Tic Tacs in my pocket. That I was going to steal it. And we're out, in the, we're out in the parking lot. And my mom could hear me because it's Tic Tacs. that going like. <laughs> <laughs> and she just turns around like, you have Tic What? Did you steal those? Like, you know, she totally, I got totally busted. And she made me go back and give it back and apologize to the cashier. And it was like that whole, th oh man. I'm surprised I ever stole anything again. It was. I was so like mortified. It was a shame. I was such. But a it's Catholic the stupidest thing age. ever. I was scared to fucking steal for it. And then I tried it one time and I loved it. <laughs> Once I stole and I got away with it, I oh, loved it. The rush is. Um, I fucking even for that loved gift it. card was amazing. And then I, I, I tamed it down for years. And then once I became a burglar, and, uh, once you're walking on ice, you might as well fucking dance. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. yeah. We live in tight dilemmas today, being a parent. I think about that all the time. And you do too. I know you have a daughter and a son, and I just have a daughter, and I'm like, what the fuck am I going to tell her? She's not going to see these stories. She's not. And I write a, I write a journal for her. Okay. Which is slowly getting to the point. You know what I'm saying? It's like in three chapters. I write now like every three days, every four days, what she's going through, what I'm going through, just to slow her in a little bit. Yeah. And to, she can't. She's not from the cut that she could get all this. She doesn't. She doesn't see it that way. It's so weird how different we are at the age of five. At the age mm. of five, I had already been involved in like a fucking drug bust. Cops had at the age of five. I was already involved in the drug bust. What, what were you selling? Oregano? I wasn't selling like, nothing. I was at a fucking house that got you're raided. Just there. Oh, okay, that makes okay. You know, to see a raid mm. when you're five at a numbers joint, and then they raid your mother's place, it gives you doubts. You're at school talking to Officer Rocco, the dare cop. Oh, yeah, Officer Rocky. And it's weird to talk to <laughs> Officer Rocky when your mother just got fucking arrested for bookmaking. Right, I can't imagine. So yeah. think about that secret that you're hiding at oh. five. Mercy doesn't have that shit. She doesn't have that at all. So at five, she didn't have a. I, I didn't have a father at five. So she's mm. way ahead of me at five. Way ahead. Like I wasn't even talking at five. I was just rating the cry. 